Welcome back, in today's video we are taking a stroll to explore some of the neighboring cabins in the area. We will check out some of the new additions as well as a few long-standing ones that have been here for over 40 years. For the next few weeks I am staying at our family log cabin in the heart of the Slovakian Low Tatras mountains. I haven't been here for many years, but I absolutely love this place and we are going to have some adventures here together, there is a lot to explore around here. Previously we had our first snow and I had to do an emergency maintenance as I discovered some dangerously worn tires and had to get them changed and today we are taking it easy and going for a stroll to explore some interesting cabins and cottages. So sit back, relax and let's begin! Hey guys, today we're going to have a look on some of the cottages down at the end of the village that I've seen from the car that I kind of like. So we go for a short walk and we might go to the Vishnaboca as well as I haven't been in the village and maybe maybe stop at Chertovica as well. So the cabins we are interested in are just on the left side of the main road as soon as we leave the village. We are going to park the car at an establishment further down the road called the Old Belt Tower. There is a restaurant and even a small shop here and since it's my first time stopping by, let's take a quick look around. So this is the stop where I'm gonna leave the car and then we're gonna walk up. I've never been here, so that's why I just have a look around. And it is quite cold today. <laughs> I think it's like a minus two or... Yeah, it's just minus two. Let's start our little walk with this very traditional log cabin, how they used to be built around here. You can tell right from the distance that this one has been here for a long time. So this is the tiny one that looks kind of cute. Let's just have a quick look around and then we can go check the big ones up there. Very traditional, maybe with the exception of that added balcony which the owner added, but it still has its original wooden shingle roof that we replaced with the metal one. It's really, really tiny, it's like the half length of the one that I'm staying in. And they have an outside toilet. And there is also a small shed attached behind, which looks more like an extension than a shed. Would be nice to see the layout inside, but I don't think anybody's home today. They have a fridge outside, that's a bit strange. That doesn't really fit into the <laughs> this whole picture. <laughs> anyway, that was the first tiny one. Uh, now let's go have a look onto the big ones. There is one that I really wanted to see up close. That Almost doesn't look like a cottage, it looks it's more like a villa. Now let's go check the newly built fancy looking cabins. So the first one, it even has a name, it's called Hata MK. And this one looks brand new, so new in fact, it's not even finished yet. But you can tell they put a lot of effort into it, they even dug out a well and lay down some fresh, perfectly manicured grass. So, if you ask me, it looks a bit too perfect, a little artificial. Still a nice big cottage regardless, whether they will uh, rent it out on Airbnb or use it for themselves. So, next one. This one looks like a proper log cabin, the big one. This looks very massive, solid. But one thing that struck me as I was walking past is that it doesn't have windows on this side. The side with the best view. Instead they opted for windows facing the other cabins. It's a strange decision if you ask me, but hey, I still kinda like it. Look quite nice, they even have a O2 internet and satellite dish, so probably watching TV as well. The next one is actually the reason why I am here today. From the main road, this one caught my eye with its sleek, fancy finish. But now that I'm up close, I can clearly say this one is not like the others. It's not even a cabin or a cottage. 
This is a full-fledged brick and mortar house, cleverly disguised as a cabin with its modern clean look. It's really convincing though. Yeah, this one looks very nice. I like the finish of the wood. It's like they put the flooring on the, <laughs> on the walls. Very nice, very nice. And we have about four more. We have about four or five more in here, so... These are more like a traditional cottage, so... This one features a traditional design, but with a modern build. I really like the extratic locks they've used to construct the walls and the roof that extends far enough from the sides that you can walk around without getting soaked in the rain. And what's interesting is that there are not just one, but two cabins with this exact same design sitting side by side. So the next one looks exactly the same as the first one. I think it's the exact same, is it? Yep, they look like twins, although on closer inspection they are not exactly the same. The loft on the second one has a slightly different design, but apart from that they share the same ground floor and the style. <laughs> this one looks quite nice, look at the wood they used, they have a very strange wood, like very textured, like a pattern. And this one is a massive cottage. With its large footprint, this is definitely one of the biggest cabins we've seen today. Perhaps only rivaled by that fancy villa, which of course wasn't a cottage but a full-fledged house. I also really like the sturdy front railing, it adds a bit of a character to the place. And they even have their own playing ground in here. <laughs> so all these, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five cabins here. These are quite new, maybe five, ten years been here. And that was the last one of the new fancy developments here, but there are still a few more of the OG cabins left, some of which have been standing for over 30 years. Let's check them out as well, starting with these two right here. The one in the back even has a basement floor with a garage. That's pretty much a dream setup, having a cabin with a dedicated parking for your car. This looks pretty amazing, I really love this one. Very nice. I love, I love the garage. <laughs> and we have a few more in there. One thing that I'm not sure of is being next to the main road. Because you will constantly have the sound of the cars. I also like that one on the little hill. We must have a nice view from there. And another one, that one's been here forever. And there's about three more, so we can go see all of them. Three, four, I can see four of them from here. But first, let's have a look this way. There seems to be something hidden behind those trees. What could it possibly be? Maybe another cabin? So there is probably another cabin up there. Is it? Yeah, there is. Well, hidden cabin, right next to another one with a garage. So many great finds here. Should we go check it out up close? Mm -mm. It looks uh, very private up there though. What do you think? Mm. You know what, let's have a little peek anyway. Looks like nobody home anyway. Quite nice. Alright, let's see what we have here. A solid wooden wall, not picking from the neighbors. These guys must really love their privacy. You would not get bothered here at all. Completely shielded from anyone passing by. Honestly, what's not to like? Quite nice, I like this one as well. Nicely secluded. And these trees, I'm not sure why they put so many trees in here. Next up we have this almost completely normal looking cabin, quite similar to ours, but it's got a few cool upgrades. They have extended it with this great looking porch that wraps around two sides, creating some extra cozy space. Definitely a nice touch. So here we have another one. 
This one has quite a style. You can see some really interesting patterns on their balcony and they've even added some cute little painting on the side. <laughs> it's those small details that really give it some charm. The next one looks more simple, basic one. So this looks like the most basic you can get. Nothing fancy. But these little cabins looking so cute and appealing nonetheless. This one also has a little porch extension built in. And another tiny one right next to it. Absolutely adorable. Despite their size, they pack so much charm and personality, you can't help but love them. And there's another one. This one looks like it. Uh, yeah, looks a little bit rough on the outside, but I'm pretty sure the inside would be very cozy. So this is probably old cabin that's been here for a long time. All of them have electric. And two windows from here. <laughs> All right, guys, we are getting at the end of our little walk today. We have one last cabin here. And this one has a bit of a character as well. With its neatly painted white strips and bright yellow window frames, this has to be one of the most colorful cabins we've seen today. And to top it off, it even has a basement floor. A bit of decoration and a birdhouse. This looks quite nice, this sitting area. Quite big, tall trees. They have some sitting table here. I like how they decorated this one and the red bench. Not sure about the red bench, but the rest looks quite nice. All right, everyone, that was the last cabin on our stroll for today, but we are not done just yet. We are heading up to check the mountain pass Chertovica next. And if you've been wondering where all the snow from the previous day has gone, don't worry, you will see it soon enough. Just 10 kilometers later and not only all the snow is back, the entire mood is very different in here with all the thick fog around. This is the ski resort where we used to come skiing during the winter holidays. We are pretty early for the skiing part as the season is not open yet, but I wanted to come here and have a little walk around the place. So this is the top of the mountain pass. It's about 1200 meters above sea level. The season is not quite open yet. I think they open from 1st December. And here is the map. So Chertovica is this one here, where we are right now. All right, there's not much to do in here, except we wanna go to the restaurant. I decided not to eat here and instead opted to just explore the place a little bit more. There is a couple of hotels up in there. I see there is some Horsky Hotel Totem. Very slippery in here. There was another ski lift on this side. I don't remember this <laughs> ski lift in here and skiing on this slope. And the Hotel Totem was in pretty desolate state. I doubt this place has been open in the past few years. All right, let's go back. I'm back at the cabin now. So that's it for today's video, guys. Let me know what cottage have you liked the most down in the comments. 
and I will see you in the next video. Until then, have an awesome day. Bye. Next time we will go for one last hike to conquer the highest peak of the Low Tatras, Jumbier. This time in complete snow and we will get to see some crazy frozen cross at the summit. Afterwards we will enjoy some hot tea at the mountain hut below. And look at that, what is that? little tiny house. Let's check it out. <laughs> tiny house. What is it? I have no idea what this is. There's some hole in here. <laughs> no idea what this place was. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the car before they tow me away. <laughs>